this video we're going to be taking a look at the HK87 droid based upon their appearance from the Mandalorian in the Black Series 6 inch line. This is another action figure I recently got on clearance and I'm happy I did. I've been wanting him for a little while now and I've seen him at retail every now and then uh, but I wasn't really wanting to pay $24.99 for this. And uh, after seeing a couple of reviews I know he's an action figure that has some trouble standing up on his own. And for the action figure I have, I have a little bit of trouble having him stand, but I think I kind of found a solution to how to get him uh, mostly stable. And that's having him in this awkward stance like this. If you have him just standing straight up, then yes, he definitely has a lot of problems. I think a lot of the reason behind that is because he's a little bit more top heavy. Uh, his legs are very skinny. And plus his ankles are have uh, very weak joints, I notice, uh, And they're very ratchety. Uh, it seems like you can only get them in this angle, or they're uh, tipped up into, oh, what would that be, like a, like a 95, 100 degree angle or something like that. You can't really get it exactly where you want, so I think that is some of the reasons why he has such problems standing up on his own. Uh, personally, I'm a bigger fan of, his, of the HK87's appearance in this color scheme compared to the Soka one. And that's mostly because he's much more aligned with how HK-47 looked here. I'm surprised Hasbro hasn't actually made an HK-47 yet in the uh, Black Series line. They have a lot of the parts for it. They could easily reuse the legs, um, some of the arms at least. They would just have to sculpt a whole new head and maybe a whole new body and that's about it. But some of the parts are there. I hope Hasbro does get around to doing HK-47 at some point. Definitely deserves his own Black Series release, and especially since now we have Malik, Basla, Revan, uh, Zalbar even. HK-47 should be coming up here soon. And this uh, particular figure you're looking at is the original one from the Legacy Collection. This is not the new one. I did recently get the Galaxy Heroes pack with the Jedi Revan in HK-47, but I plan on keeping that... Uh, HK droid on the card. So uh, look out for that video here very soon. So here's this package. Again, it's the windowless package, uh, but that image of him looks pretty good. Mandalorian, HK87. Um, not sure which planet that is in the back. In fact, I'm not even sure where these guys show up in the Mandalorian. I think it's in season two though. About six inches exact. And he's figure number 29 for the Mandalorian. Sure got enough uh, Mandalorian figures. Uh, and they actually have their own unique uh, description here in the back. So they're the bodyguards of Morgan Elsbeth. Makes sense. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference between the, the red ones and these uh, more rusted out colored ones are though. So these guys look pretty good. I'm a big fan of them. Uh, the TBC line will be getting their own version of the, this particular scheme here very soon and I do have a few of those on pre-order. I don't have the Black Series Ahsoka version though. Not sure if I'll get that one. I may if I find it on sale like this one. I only paid $17 for this guy so not too bad. Head sculpt looks pretty good. Uh, definitely a whole lot different compared to the HK 47s or the HK 50 droids that we got during the Knights of the Old Republic era. And I can kind of see the progression of this. I would assume this is supposed to be more like a uh, metal plating protecting the skull there. Various gadgets sticking out of him there. That's his visor. And he has these robes wrapped around him, which I'm not sure exactly what the purpose behind them is, but it does look kind of nice. It's wrapped around here with this uh, 
leather strap, basically. Or I assume that's what it's supposed to be. It does have a belt here. There's this control pack in the back. I assume that's supposed to be his control box. Um, a lot of flexibility at the shoulder armor here. Let's have some pouches right here. And then his legs. So in terms of his articulation, he does have the ball joint at the head, and then hinged shoulders. And because he has that extra flexibility in the shoulder armor, he can go way back. So that's very nice. Uh, he does have about a 90 degree angle hinge at the elbow there. And he does have hinged wrists, which have a very nice range. Uh, it does have a joint at the torso, and it's not too restricted at all, even with this robe and this uh, strap here. Uh, he does have hinged hips, then uh, swivel thigh, and hinged knees and rocker angles. Uh, there's a very small joint there at the hip. I would assume you're able to take this robe off if you wanted to. Can't be too bad. Not going to though. Uh, it doesn't really seem like the belt can come apart. You probably would have to boil that and then pull the strap off as well. In terms of weapons and accessories, he just has the one. Kind of like a battle droid blaster, but slightly different. More modified. Maybe it's a newer version of it. it looks pretty good. And he holds it well in his hand. And I think unlike the TBC action figure, there's no way you can... Uh, plug this into his back. And I think that goes the same for the other Black Series of Soka Droid. So that's something that is unique about the TBC figure that is a plus in its favor. See how well he can stand now. And he's a little wobbly. But if you work with him a little bit, you can get him mostly stable. I'm probably going to put him on a stand or have him lean against something just so I don't have any problems. Now let's see if he can survive the turntable here. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to sh show about the HK87 droid here. Would I recommend him for your collection? I would. Uh, like I said, he's one that seems to be readily available on clearance in most areas. Um, I only paid $17 for him, and I have no doubt if you look in the right places and you hold off long enough, you might be able to find him for prices like that, or even less too. Seems like he's a little bit easier to get a hold of compared to the Soka Droid, or at least that's uh, the experience I've had so far. I have seen the Black Series of Soka Droid in uh, Walmart every now and then, uh, just like one here and there. And like I said, I don't really want to spend $25 plus for it, especially since uh, it's a nice action figure, but there's really not a whole lot to it. But I'm glad to have it in my collection. I'm glad to have this particular one. I think he looks a lot more authentic in that uh, particular color scheme compared to the all red. That's very nice. And like I mentioned, I hope uh, Hasbro reutilizes some of those parts at some point to make a Black Series HK-47. Definitely deserves it. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate all your support, and check out some of the links in the description if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.